Hey guys, wanted to take some time to talk to you about setting up a basic network inside of GNS3. Um, GNS3 is the simulator that I've used for probably the past, oh, I don't know, five or six years. I mean, I used it starting with my CCNA, getting all the way up to my CCIE and, uh, and routing and switching. And uh, and I've used it for pretty much my, everything. I've I used it for my customers. Uh, you know, my customers will ask me, hey, do, do you remember what that command is or, you know, where exactly it is? You know, they'll say, in EIGRP named mode, do you remember exactly where that is? And I'll load up GNS3 real quick. I'll drag a router in, I'll light it up, do a quick syntax. I mean, it literally takes me two minutes, and I get what I need, and I just close down the project. So that's kind of what I'm going to do now, just to show you kind of what I do all the time. So when you first open up GNS3, assuming you've gone through the other videos that I have, and you've seen how to load up the appliances and how... Um, you know, how you actually install it and, and get your different iOS images installed and all that kind of stuff. This is a basically where you would start. And this is going to be a long-term project. If this is something that you're working on for a customer, you're labbing up their network, you know, you would go ahead and you would give this a name and you would give this essentially where you want it to be saved. And it could be saved anywhere. I generally put mine in Dropbox so that I can get to them from anywhere. And when I crash my machine, they don't, uh, they don't go away forever, right? So, but you can put them anywhere you want. So I'm going to say cancel here. Now, the whole idea here with GNS3 is for you to be able to click and drag devices of your choice, whatever you have loaded in here, and there's many, many different things that you can have. I mean, I only I only have, uh, I would say, probably 50% of what you can actually have in GNS3, probably not even that much, um, but you can add, you know, you can actually connect GNS3 to outside hosts if you want to. You can add different uh, VM images if you want to. I actually have some ASAs added in here so that I can do some firewalls and I can lab up some customer networks if I want to, but the whole idea is that from the toolbar here, you can click and drag essentially any device that you want to. So you have your routers here, your switches, then you have some desktop hosts, you have your security button here for um, for your, uh, your firewalls, and then you kind of have an everything button. And this everything button is just going to list all the devices that you essentially have loaded. I usually don't use that one because um, for me... It's just easier to go down by device. And then the last option that you have is going to be your link button. So once you add all the devices in here, you're going to need to connect them together, just like you would physically cable them in your data center, right? So across the top here, you have some toolbar buttons. You have a, a new project if you're going to open one. You can open up a, a saved project here. You can save it. Uh, I think this is the snapshot button, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just click in here. I think, yep, that's the managed snapshot buttons. When you have all of your devices added in here, you can see what interfaces they're actually uh, connected right on the topology screen here. I close, there's a, by default, there's a tab view right about here that will give you all the devices that you have, what they're running, and if you can click and expand them, it'll tell you what interfaces you have connected, but I generally will, will leave that close so that I can lab up a bigger network that I have more workspace and uh, when I need to I'll just click this take a look at the interface or hover over it this button here is a console to all device so generally if you have 14 devices rather than right clicking everyone or double clicking you can just click that button and it will connect to all the consoles it'll pop you know putty or secure CRT or whatever you have and uh, will allow you to do your thing. Now you have these these four buttons here, so this is going to play all of your devices. If you click this and you have 14 devices in here, it will turn all of them on. I'll get to all this in a second. You have your pause button, your stop button, and then your reload, right? So we've all gone in and done AAA configurations on a device, and oops, we lock ourselves out. You can click the reload button and it'll reload all your devices, or you can just reload that one device. And then you have some cosmetic features here. So you have different pieces here. You can draw some boxes. You can draw rectangles. So if you're doing like OSPF, right, and you want to, maybe you want to have like a, uh, you know, an OSPF area, you know, you can do something like this and say, okay, this is area zero. And you can say, okay, this is area one. Or, you know, you can, you can do those kinds of things if you want to, right? You can do the same thing with the square. Um, you can insert a picture if you want to. I've actually done some, some diagrams for customers in the past where, they wanted me to have a GNS3 topology, but it needed to look like their network, and so you just add a picture. So let's actually get in, let's drag some devices in here. So what I'm going to do is I want to drag some 7204s, right? So what I want to do is I can left-click, hold it down, and drag one device in there, and that's all well and good. But what if I want eight of them, right? Well, I already dragged one, so I need seven more. What I can do is I can hold down the Shift key, left-click and hold it, drag this in, and then I get a pop-up box, right? So I want eight routers. I can just click seven here, and now all of a sudden, it will automatically auto -magically drag in the other seven that I want, giving me eight routers total. So you can do that. You can hold down the shift key and just click and drag this in, 
right? And so your routers here, whatever templates that you have loaded, you can go ahead and you can drag those in and you can modify them in a number of different places. So let me show you that quickly. Let's say that I want to change the default template. The easiest way for me to do that is to right click on the actual router here and actually say configure template. This is going to be how I actually configure the naming convention. So you'll see all my devices here, they start with R1, R8. This is where you can set that up. Uh, you can change the default image that you're using, you can change the default configuration that you're using, uh, you can change the template name. So if I just wanted to call this JP's router, I could do that. The memory, this is where you would adjust the various different um, you know, memory allocations that you have for that individual device. And then the slots. The slots are going to be obviously the cards that you have installed. So you have Ethernet, you have uh, serial interfaces, gig interfaces, whatever you have. But this is the template, meaning that every device that you drag in here is going to pull from this. So all of these devices are exactly the same. If I want to edit one, so let's say that on router one, I need more uh, Ethernet interfaces. Well, maybe I'll go down here and I'll say, well, give me eight more Ethernet interfaces, but just on router one, right? I could do that. And now this just takes place on router one. If I go take a look at router two, router two still has the original serial interfaces that would have been installed, right? And it takes a while to understand, you know, how to do this. It just takes practice, right? Now let's grab a switch. Now for me, I'm going to grab, uh, we'll grab the viral switch that I have loaded here. You'll see that I do have my images. Now, by the way, I do work for a customer that has rights to be able to use some of the images that you see in my GNS3. Don't ask me where I got them. Don't ask me how I got them. I do work for a, a company that is allowed to use them. So I'm permitted for you guys. If you don't work for a partner that is specifically allowed to, you it would technically be illegal. So don't try to copy me. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a switch and I'm going to put it in here. This is actually a, a switch directly exported from Viral. So if you have access to Viral Images, you can watch my appliance video and learn how to install that. GNS3, if you don't have a switch, also comes with a um, kind of a default switch that you can load up. Uh, I don't generally use it, but this is an unmanaged switch. So you can add various different ports and you would just basically create a VLAN ID. It's all point click. Again, I don't really use it because I use a real, a real managed switch. Now, once we're done, once you drag these devices in, I mean, heck, you know, we could drag in an ASA if we wanted to, but we don't care at the moment. Once you're done with these guys, you need to connect them. So you'll click on your add link here, and you'll, you'll see this little red stop sign perfectly normal. When you get back into your workspace, you're going to see this little plus symbol here. All you're going to do is you're going to hover over the device you want to connect. You're going to left click once, and that's going to give you the list of all the available interfaces that you have. So I would pick maybe Ethernet 2.0 and once I do that and I start moving this around you can see I have this line that's now attached to my device. All I need to do is I need to click the next device that I want to connect it to. Maybe I want to go to router 2. I would click on router 2 and I would connect it to router 2. Once I do that you can see that I still have the plus symbol. I can't do anything else unless I go back over here and I click the the link line again. Once I do that I get my mouse pointer back and I can click this guy to go in different areas if I want to, right? So now I have router one and router two connected. Maybe I want to connect router two to the switch, so I'll click over my, my link again, click router two, maybe I'll say Ethernet 3.1, go over to the switch, and I'll click, you know, whatever particular interface that I want to, right? Now suppose I forget what interfaces those are, I can hover over the interface button, I can click on that, and it will show me where those interfaces are, or, or essentially what I've connected if I forget. If I want to see it up on the screen at all times because I'm labbing, I can go ahead and do that. And you can move these names around as well. So, you know, for me, because I have OCD, I always like to have my router names in the middle of the router. So I'll kind of sit here for 20 minutes and get it right, you know. Uh, so that's basically how these devices, I'm going to delete these guys because there's no uh, no need for them essentially. So you can just highlight them all, right click, say delete. So now I have kind of this small network going on here where I have a switch and I have two routers. And now if I want to turn them on, I can either individually turn them on by right clicking and saying start on that individual router. Or I can click the plus sign, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the play sign. Once I click the play button, what we should see is we should see these links essentially start turning green. And what should happen in theory is I should be able to console into these guys. So I'm going to go ahead and click the console button. And we should see secure CRT actually pop open. And let me just go drag it open a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter here to start iOS V. This, this sometimes takes a, a, some time to start, but that's okay. So here you can see that my router one is started up. Started up pretty fast. And so I'm going to say show IP interface brief. 
uh, we'll say e assigned. I have no IP addresses. Let's actually back this out. We'll say show IP interface brief. So here's all my interfaces. But what interface did I use again? I can't remember. Well, Ethernet 2.0. So let's go ahead and assign that guy an IP address. So we'll say conf t interface Ethernet 2.0. We'll say no shut, and I'll say IP address, let's say 10.1.1.1, and we'll give this guy a slash 24, right? Do show IP interface brief E assigned. So we got this guy an IP address. Now, let's go over to router 2 and see what did we use. We used Ethernet 3.0 over here. So let's go back to our CLI, and we'll hit enter a few times. Config T, do show IP interface brief. And so what do we want? We want 3.0, so we'll say interface Ethernet 3.0, no shut, IP address, and, and you'll see guys, this is exactly like running the real, uh, you know, a real device. In fact, it is actually running the real image that I would, that I would run on a real 7200 router. If I say do show ver, do show ver, you can see here, it tells me, hey, this is the image that you're running. We're not running a virtualized image, essentially. We're running the real iOS that we would run on a real router. And this didn't cost me any money. All I needed to do was obtain the, obviously I needed the, the machine to run it on. So there's your, your cost. You need a desktop or a laptop, right? Um, but essentially here, this is basically just the, the cost of having the desktop and having access to these images. Anyway, so we'll say IP address 10.1.1.2. We'll say 255, 255, 2550. And let's say do show IP interface brief E assigned. And we should say do ping 10.1.1.1 and we should have reachability, in theory. There we go, 80%. Do it again, we have full reachability. Let's see what our switch is up to. Is Mr. Switch awake yet? It is. So if we wanted to now, we could say config T, uh, we could say host name, uh, maybe switch one, and uh, let's say, you know, VLAN. Sometimes this does happen in some of the, the viral images, so don't worry, sometimes we'll get some weird images, not the end of the world, but we'll say VLAN, I don't know, 15. Uh, we'll say name, oh, I don't know. Uh, GNS3, right? Exit. Do show VLAN brief. There's our VLAN that we created. So here, I mean, essentially right now, I have all my layer 2 capabilities. I have all my layer 3 capabilities. In fact, let's actually just do this. Let's say router EIGRP1. Let's say network all zeros. And we'll go on to router 1. And we'll escape out of here. Router EIGRP1. We'll spell like a normal human. EIGRP1, network all zeros, and we should see EIGRP come right up. And there we have it. Let's create a loopback just for kicks. Interface loopback, uh, we'll say zero. IP address, let's say 1.1.1. i got to learn how to spell. I'm rushing because I want you guys to be able to get going in lab and stop watching me. Too many ones. 255.255.255.255. And in theory, we go over to router 1. Do show IP interface brief E assigned. Oop, oh, that's not what I wanted. Do show IP route, EIGRP, and there's the loopback address that we have advertised. So we now have the exact, um, you know, the exact interfaces that we that we want. We have all the capabilities that we want. We have a little mini network here running in EIGRP. Uh, or in uh, in GNS3 rather. So this is very very easy to get going. It's I mean we've this video right now is only about 13 minutes and already we have EIGRP going between router one and router two. We have a VLAN created on on switch one. If I want to add another device here, I could go ahead and do that. So I can add router three. Let's connect him in. So let's go ahead and we'll say we want this guy to be gig zero. We'll connect this guy to gig one. Oh, I got to turn the switch off. Sometimes you'll find those limitations, not the end of the world. We can turn it off and we'll connect it. Sometimes you may find that. So we'll say gig zero. We'll connect this guy to gig zero one. And we'll go ahead and turn this back on. So, you know, you'll find some of those little things like, oops, you know, I forgot to do that and you'll turn it back on. But now you have all of your layer two, your layer three capabilities, everything you're going to really need for your studying, whether it be you know, your network plus, whether it be, um, you know, your something like your CCNA or your CCMP. Like I said, guys, I use GNS3 for my CCNA all the way up to my CCIE in, in uh, route switch. And I think the only thing I ever really used a real switch for was a handful of features like UDLD, uh, private VLANs. You know, I had two 3750s that I acquired from a company. And as long as they supported the features and I could learn the commands, I had those sitting next to me. I think I've turned them on probably half a dozen times since I've gotten them over the five years that I've had them because everything else I can do in GNS3. Hope you guys enjoyed this video.